Hi everyone. Hello, welcome to my first live stream. So I am coming to you from Toronto in Canada. It's so great to meet you all and see you in a different format. So just let me know in the chat where uh, you are all from. Um, it's great to be able to just connect wherever we are. And um, I think it's so amazing that we can actually do things like this together. Uh, when I was first starting off, I thought YouTube videos would be it, but uh, clearly we can do so much more with this. Um, my name is Anita, and I was born in 1979 in Toronto. Uh, both my parents are from South Korea, and they moved here from Seoul. And so I was uh, born and raised in a very traditional household. Uh, many of you may be able to relate to that if your parents moved to Canada around the same time, like in the 1970s. So right now I'm 42 years old, and I started being 40 because mean is actually a Korean word that signifies a beautiful person. Uh, I have a YouTube channel and I am very happy to say that I've exceeded 30 videos just on Korean skincare and traditions. Um, I've heard a lot of comments from the viewers who say that uh, a lot of it is relatable or there's a lot of new things that people didn't know about and that's my mandate and my purpose of how I started Mean 40 was to introduce Korean traditions and skincare products to Canadians who may not be familiar with them. I grew up uh, with my mom believing certain things about health and skin. And now in a new age world, a lot of the practices that my mom taught me, they proven to be actually quite insightful. Uh, one of the things is to start off the morning with a warm drink as opposed to cold water, which is believed to be a shock to the system. Uh, by drinking warm water, it really preps you from the inside and it also helps with your skin because it opens up the pores and it also relaxes you and puts you in a really good state of mind. So with that, um, and especially because Canada can tend to get pretty cold, uh, in the even in the summertime when we have uh, rain, it can get really damp. So in the mornings, I always follow that tradition of drinking something warm and something that's citrusy. So right now, um, I'm drinking a little bit of lemon water, and it just helps detox and get me prepped for the day. So through this live stream, I really wanted to talk about skincare, but start off with the basics. Um, I'm assuming that if you are joining, you are new to skincare or you're looking to revamp your existing skincare regime. And I hope that uh, I will provide that encouragement and motivation uh, by taking it step by step. So today we'll talk about morning skincare. And I will show you that you can probably do this with the stuff that you already have at home. So you don't necessarily need to buy a whole suite of new products in order for you to get a morning skincare routine started. Uh, I myself started building one by one, step by step, and it was a lot of trial and error because uh, my skin has changed over the years. Uh, it's it's uh, a fact that I admit that my skin in my 40s is not the same as when it was in my 20s. In fact, uh, I, I've become a lot more skin conscious now because I have been paying par particular attention to the way my skin responds to certain products, but it's more the technique and the habitual making things a habit and doing it routinely is what really my skin responds really well to. And I believe that yours will as well. So when I was looking at how can I first introduce this to my Canadian friends who have never tried Korean skincare before, I realized that even Koreans find the 10 step skincare method really overwhelming. So it's just too much for them, even um, for those who have been doing a couple of steps, they just can't seem to work their way up to the 10 steps all of a sudden. So I'm here to tell you that there's no pressure for you to do it all at once. It's based on comfort levels and what we like to do for our skin. And we get further encouraged because 
we start seeing the results even after 30 days, maybe even sooner if your skin is very responsive. Even for people with sensitive skin, they start to see a lot of improvements and it doesn't necessarily take a lot of time, nor does it take all the evasive methods. I know there's so much out there right now. Uh, retinoids are hot for people in their 30s, um, fillers, uh, other types of cosmetic procedures. Um, I'm going to be upfront and, and tell you that I did research those as well, but I haven't actually dived into them. So I haven't tried fillers. I haven't had any cosmetic surgery, even though South Korea is really well known for their techniques and their really good results. Um, I haven't gone there yet. I also have not explored uh, retinol. I kind of feel a little bit hesitant about going into retinols. I know that some people see really great tightening and lifting and firming results. But I, I found that a lot of the cream products that contain high quality ingredients could give you the same lift. They can give you the same bounce. So uh, I explored more along those lines, especially now with a lot of plant-based retinoids that um, tend to do the same thing. Bacotiol is one of those ingredients that I've been kind of experimenting with. And it's a little too soon to say, but I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. So in the morning, I like to wake up. Uh, first thing I do is, is I make my bed. So this is not skincare related, but it goes along with the practice of making things a habit. So if I uh, don't make my bed in the morning, I feel like something is always off. So I do that and then I turn on some music uh, just to set the mood. Right now, I'm really liking, um, of course, it's the season. So I like Christmas music. But there's also a really good playlist um, that I like from Spotify, and it's called uh, Chan Chill Korean. And that's something that I really, really have been listening to. Chill K-pop is another one. So here's my Spotify list. Um, I just find that the, it's really easy on the ears. Uh, it's not overly vocal, but at the same time, it helps you kind of ease into the morning. Um, so I do that and then I wash my hands. So that's a really important step that I haven't heard a lot of people say that they do, but I'm gonna assume that you do. Um, the reason why it's so important is because we don't want to be dipping our fingers into products, um, especially if you're using creams. Um, also, even if you're using a pump or a dropper, the fact that you're putting it on dirty hands is something that I'm always conscious of. So. Um, I'm going to use some hand sanitizer because I am going to dabble into some products. So I'm just going to make sure that my hands are clean. And then after you have clean hands, the first step um, that I would do is wash my face with warm water. Um, I like to often skip this step, especially when the weather's getting colder and my skin is turning a lot more sensitive. Uh, so Sometimes I just skip the face wash and I go straight into the second step, which is the fermented essence. So here are two that I really like to use. Um, this one is a Korean brand. This one is Beauty Counter. So this one has plant derived ingredients. This one has the fermented uh, barley. And I've been using this for a number of years and I keep going back to it. It's watery in texture. Uh, at the end of this live, I'm going to actually turn on my timer and do my skincare routine without explaining so that you can see that it doesn't take very much time. So first off, by doing two layers of the essence, and this is called the first treatment essence, the purpose of the essence, and this is such a key Korean skincare step, is, is that it makes sure that your skin is primed so that it can fully absorb all the other layers of products that you're going to be using. So because the essence has fermented ingredients um, and a high concentration of fermented ingredients, what happens is the molecules are a lot smaller so they can go deep within your skin layer as well. Uh, it promotes hydration from a deeper level. So that's why I really love the essence step and it's not one that I would skip. Um, then after the essence is the toner. 
so there are different forms of toners. The days that I feel that my skin is a little bit grimy and I want a little bit of exfoliation, especially if I wake up, I look at myself and my skin looks a bit dull, uh, I use a toner pad. It's uh, a really great step, and, and these are two of my faves. Um, but it doesn't matter what the product is as long as you're using it in the right way. So sweeping upwards and also paying attention to the creases, like the nose areas and the forehead. Um, and then don't forget to, to do the neck because the neck also needs exfoliation as well. Um, other times, if I want more moisture, which is lately, I use skin. And this one, you can see that I, I use it quite often. So this is something that I really love because it really benefits the dry skin. So I do two layers of this. So two layers of the essence, either the toner pad or another two layers of the toner. So then my face already feels like it's, it's becoming moisturized without like the tightness. So that's why I tend to skip the face wash in the morning because using a face foam really helps uh, or not using a face foam really helps minimize that tightness of the face, especially if your skin is dry. Then afterwards, I use my vitamin C. So I use a vitamin C serum. And for beginners, I suggest you start off with either a 5% or a 10% concentration of vitamin C. If you use anything higher than that and your skin is sensitive, you'll get a tingling sensation. And that's your skin telling you that the vitamin C level is too high. So if you bring it down a notch and then you work your way up, that'll actually help promote the benefits of the vitamin C serum as well because your skin needs some time to adapt to whatever ingredients you're applying. So then the vitamin C serum is another important step that I don't skip in the morning. And then after that, I love to use another essence or an ampoule. So an ampoule is a more concentrated form of an essence. So it's a lot richer. It will promote a lot more hydration. Um, for days that uh, I have a little bit of acne or like especially in the, in the mask area, I like to use a, a snail essence. And the, the products that contain snail, I try to make sure that uh, it's, it's an ethical production of snail because now there's more awareness about um, how the, the snail extract is, is being taken away from the snail. And so certain brands, they tell us that they use really inhu or humane treatments. <laughs> so it's not inhumane to the snails. And, and this is one of them. So I really appreciate the fact that uh, Korean companies are now being a, um, a lot more conscious, um, especially in the packaging. Like this one is a, is a product that I have filmed a review for, and it's Pyongyang Yu. And this one, they focus on a very short list of ingredients. So like the foods that we eat, uh, my mom's always telling me that too many ingredients is too complicated. So she likes really short-listed ingredients, uh, no preservatives in the food that we eat. And it's also the same thing as the, the stuff that we're putting on our face. So if it's too much ingredients, uh, unnecessary fillers, um, sometimes water and alcohol are used to really bring up the, the product level, meaning that it can include a couple of the key ingredients and then just fill the rest of the bottle with water and alcohol. So I'm a little bit more conscious now about the concentration of ingredients as well. And I encourage you to do the same. I find that uh, people, my friends in our 40s, they tend to be a lot more aware of what's going in their body, so the foods that they're ingesting. Uh, they, they look for organic ingredients when possible. They look for integrity and also the quality of content. So it's the same for our skincare. And I've uh, tested a couple of brands, and I will come back at you through my YouTube channel. I'll film some one brand videos and, and give you my thoughts. Um, I don't want to compromise on the results and the skincare benefits because um, I found that a lot of the North American brands, sometimes they promote organic, they promote um, you know, natural ingredients, and they don't necessarily give me the skin results that I, I love seeing from a Korean brand. 
So for me, it was really welcoming to see Korean brands really now steering themselves in the direction of quality ingredients, shortlisted ingredients, and organic when possible. They also take care of packaging to make sure they minimize certain plastics and, and garbage. Uh, is amazing. When I went to visit Korea, they have a lot more aware of the environment, uh, becoming more uh, sustainable, and uh, that's something that I really admire, and I hope to see it translate more into the skincare. Okay, so after the ample, now we're going to move on to more of a barrier. Now that it's the winter and there's harsh winds, sometimes when I smile, certain areas to just feel like my skin is ripping. So here, the corners of my eyes, and naturally those are the areas where wrinkles tend to emerge first. So here, here, even the neck, if it's not protected with a scarf, hands, they tend to become a lot more tight and rough. And so I like to look for something that has a shea butter content, even if it's a small percentage, the fact that shea butter is, is so rich on its own naturally, um, and the more higher up shea butter is on the list of the moisturizer, I think that that's a really great sign. So uh, in order for me to protect myself against the dryness of the elements, and even in the summertime, if you are sitting by an air conditioner or wherever there's artificial air, and the, the heater is another example in our cars, so uh, a moisturizer is really key. And then finally, another protection barrier is sunscreen. So I use sunscreen all year round, maybe a lower SPF in the winter time, but I always be sure to um, add this as part of the last step of my base skincare. So there's a sunscreen and then finally a mist. So this is something that really acts as a seal. So all of the layers that were put on our face beforehand, it really gets kind of locked in with a mist. And that's the purpose of a mist is to constantly provide hydration and moisture. So this is something that's a, a small size and I've got so many mists that are travel size. It's great for just carrying around, putting it in your purse and then or keeping it at your desk and then being sure to mist throughout the day. So those are the steps. And if I have a little bit more time or if I have some big meetings, then that morning I will use a little bit of makeup, not, not too crazy, but it would be a, a cushion, which is um, a natural sort of look. It gives you that no makeup, makeup, uniform, even texture. Um, and then I would do like an eyebrow. So lately, I've been uh, really liking the look of an eyeshadow as a, as an eyebrow. And it's really easy too. I just pick a color that kind of matches with my hair color. And I go a little bit lighter because if uh, it's too dark, it kind of looks very harsh. Um, so I go a shade lighter and I take a brush like this. A little angled brush that's a little that's not stiff but it's you know very flexible and then I just kind of take this and then put it across my eyebrows and um, with age I was told by a Korean makeup artist when I had my makeup done in Korea and they are amazing they just provide such tailored tips that uh, the older we get we want to move away from an arched eyebrow you kind of want to do a, a natural kind of almost straight line, but not too straight. Uh, and that kind of gives us an appearance of being younger. Um, Korean people call it innocence. So it kind of gives you a lot more of a softer look. The arch can be quite harsh and very strong, which is appropriate in some instances. But uh, for an everyday, I kind of like to do something a little bit more straight line. So at this point, I'm going to do my demonstration of my morning routine. And I'm going to do it straight without talking so that you can see how long it takes. I'm also going to time myself so that uh, you can see how long it takes. So 
Here we go. Started the clock. And I'm not going to rush through it. This is like my normal pace. Yeah. This is the essence. So the first layer. And then I'm going to do a second layer. And then I do the neck. So just patting it in. Be sure it's absorbed. There. I do two layers of this as well. Vitamin C serum. And I'm I'm generous with myself. I like to use a lot of product. So that, that would be a, an amount that I would use. And then tapping it in. Because you want to see results. You don't want to just uh, be like dabbing on one drop for your entire face. Enough coverage to get the neck as well. So your face feels very dewy and saturated, but not sticky. And that's the key. With the right products, it shouldn't even feel like you're wearing layers of skincare on your face. Okay. Next is the Snail Essence. Again, very, very generous amounts. I don't know if you can see that, but my fingertips are fairly soaked with the product. And I didn't mention an eye cream because generally eye cream, I save it for the night. Um, I don't think that uh, I, I need it for the daytime just to be at, but uh, I sometimes use the serum if it's a lightweight serum and I just make sure that I get the areas under my eyes too. Okay, next, Chia Butter. And this, I would use a spatula which I didn't bring with me. So I'll take it from, I'll use a make, the end of a makeup brush. I don't like to dip my fingers into a pot just because I don't want the skincare products to get contaminated just in case. Backs of the hands. Okay, so again, that was a generous amount. And then at this point, I would kind of step away from the skincare, uh, maybe get dressed, put on my clothes, come back, and then the sunscreen. So a generous amount. Just tap it. Tapping is really key because it ensures that it gets into the deepest layers of of your skin. And by doing the tapping motion, it also promotes circulation on your face. I promise you it doesn't hurt, as in it's not painful. And once you get used to doing this, you don't want to tug your face ever because you're almost worried that it's going to promote sagging. And if you do tug upwards motion, it's something that really we need to get used to. It took me a while to get used to as well because the immediate reaction is to go up and down, but um, the tugging is never a good motion. So again, it's, it's all about habits and intentionally setting good ones. So I would do two layers of the sunscreen, but I'm just gonna demo one and then mist to lock it in. So here it is, four minutes and 45 seconds. And that's talking my way through it. So I think this is a really good way to start the day. 
just five minutes aside for yourself. I know that mornings can be really hectic, especially if you're trying to catch the bus or get to that Zoom meeting that starts extra early. Uh, so by just setting your alarm five, 10 minutes earlier, it can really make a big difference uh, in you preparing a beverage that gets you warmed up in the morning, um, as well as just having your products in front of you in the morning really helps to reinforce that mindset of keeping skincare first. Uh, I think that by doing these things on a daily basis, it really helps us to appreciate the skin that we have and taking care of ourselves in a way that we are meant to uh, by being careful about the foods that we eat, getting outside and allowing our blood to circulate, um, reaches our skin and our face as well. And also the techniques of applying and layering in a certain way. So always remember that you're starting from the thinnest texture first. So the, the watery the watery products are always applied first so that they can absorb and then increasing the thicker textures at the end. The thicker textures at the end, if you put them on first, then it actually prevents all the other nutrition from penetrating under that layer and reaching your skin. So you're actually wasting a lot of skincare product that way. Uh, I've learned so many things over the years. And so each of my videos on my channel, I hope articulate some of the Korean skincare practices that I found really beneficial and that my non-Korean friends have found really fascinating. Um, sometimes it gets a little bit of taking used to. And so I intend to be offering workshops in order for groups of people to come together and I will start to face the day with you together setting aside uh, five, 10 minutes each day. And I've also started by thinking about the products. So through my workshops, I intend on providing the products to make it a lot easier for us to be on the same page. So if I'm using the serum and the cream, then you would be able to open up your packets and use them with me. Um, I'm thinking of longer term workshops where we would meet for a longer period of time, like say, Monday to Fridays, every morning for a month straight in order for us to be able to cultivate that healthy habit together. I think it holds us accountable and it also brings a community of mean 40 friends together. So women in their 40s who are looking to make time for their self-care. Um, by having the products in front of them, it really makes it a lot easier as well. And there's the added benefit of being able to try certain products before you dive in and make purchases. So Korean uh, tradition, also just the shopping culture is very generous by nature. So if you buy like one item, you're guaranteed to get a package of, of samples because it's just a culture of generosity. And so I wanted to bring that mindset, those gifts to Canada. I've intentionally ordered a lot of samples so that uh, when we start doing our skincare workshops, whether it's three times um, a week or whether it's five times a week, we can get together, start taking smaller steps towards skincare and then reaching our skin goals. So thanks for tuning in to this live session. I encourage you to keep communicating with me. I will do the same through my videos and my blogs. And hopefully when my website is up and running, you'll be able to shop through a variety of Korean products that I've curated based on my personal experiences and ones that have worked for me in my 40s, um, as well as getting into my 40s, uh, adapting to the nature of my skin. So thanks so much for joining tonight. And I will come back with another live feed with my night routine. But as you can see, less than five minutes spent in the morning can really help prep your skin to face the day with sufficient protection and also help you from fighting off those early signs of aging. Um, free radicals are everywhere all year round. And so make sure to follow some of these steps and start with the products that you currently have. If you are running low on something and would like my advice, always reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Take care and see you next time. Bye.